So inside these magic quadcopters, to help you fly them, they're inherently unstable, and there's, there's a motor at each corner, uh, you have a, an accelerometer and a gyroscope. And these things working together tell the, 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 the quadcopter which way up it is. And you need, there's a similar problem when you're, when you're building a, um, a biped robot that's walking. You've got a dynamic situation where you're shifting weight and you're using that dynamic pendulum. And you need to know how you're doing, where, whether you're going up and down an incline. So the solution to that is to buy one of these combined accelerometer and gyroscopes on a chip. So, so this, this device here with the LED that's at the end of this arm um, <coughs> comes from China, eBay, 99p. Um, if you need to know exactly what, what the details are, come and talk to me afterwards. Um, you can connect it up to your Raspberry Pi. The first ever time I came here, I had one of those connected to a Raspberry Pi. At the moment, just for the sake of I'm controlling a server and a few other bits and pieces, it's connected to an Arduino. So what it's doing, the, the purpose of an accelerometer, you're thinking, well, it's acceleration, isn't it? It's how it's your 0-60 EV car and stuff like that. But actually, an accelerometer is a three-dimensional device that's measuring the angle of acceleration. And what you're trying to do is, you're trying to measure the acceleration due to gravity, or in other words, which way is down. That's all you're interested in. But it is an accelerometer, and it will be confused by uh, horizontal movements or, or, or any movement, wind blowing it, stuff like that. So you also, uh, as a separate component, add to that a gyro. You know, a gyro is just like that gyroscope uh, toy that you had in the past, or, or spinning a, a bicycle wheel and sitting on a, on a stool if you've ever done that. You, it's this thing that wants to keep its place in the world. It wants to stay like that. And when you try and turn it, it recognises that that's what's happening. If you've got, without going into all the maths, if you've got a gyro and accelerometer together, even if you're on a thing that's moving around like a mad thing like this up in the, in, in the air, you can use the gyro to cancel out uh, any of the other accelerations and hopefully get to which way is down. Um, quite complicated, quite a lot of maths. Um, when I did my A-level maths, I don't know if there's any A-level maths students here, uh, I gave up on maths uh, a little bit too early. I decided that some of it wasn't relevant and I'd never ever use it. And I'm really regretting that now because my knowledge of complex numbers and all that maths is, is quite weak. And so I've needed to get somebody to help me on this project. So on this project, I've built this robot, which is basically the idea is to put one of these things on, on the end of an arm so we can, in a controlled fashion, move it around. We've also got a, if you're interested in compasses, We've also got a magnetometer there, a three-axis magnetometer, but we'll, 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 we'll skip that for now. So I'll switch it on. What we've got on the screen here is a serial connection between my laptop and that Arduino. In the top, in that top section there, which is just cut off, can you see a question mark? No. So I've just typed in a question mark uh, and hit enter. What that's done is it's sent a question mark character to the Arduino, and the Arduino has responded with all the stuff in the, in the bottom there. And what it's, what it's saying is, if it is cut off, what it's saying is there's a set of characters and commands that I can give into it, and it will give that information <coughs> out. So let's try, uh, let's try one. Let's, so I'm going to send in a capital C, uh, and so it's saying at the moment the heading on that compass is 309 degrees. I can demonstrate this in much more detail later on if you come and see me. So uh, just to cut to the chase, what I can do now is I can set an oscillation going. Um, so I've sent a command which is telling this servo to oscillate this arm. So now we're in a dynamic situation. I've skipped a load of easy bits and I've gone to a dynamic situation where this thing is very slowly moving. The, the, the maths and the dynamics that are happening there, it's only happening in one plane. There's a lot of things that are very simplified so I can wrap my head around the maths that's going on. So that's moving ever so slowly and now what I can do is I can say, well, give me some information about uh, what's going on. So that's all of the information that's coming off this little chip. And bear in mind, this is a 99p chip from China. That's 99p delivered to your door. Now, I don't know how they do it. Um, so there's a lot of information there. I can alter it so that I'm getting uh, less information. So, um, that. so there's less information. I can, I can uh, stop it all together. So, So uh, that's basically what this thing is doing. So just to recap, I'm sending it commands uh, through a serial port. So I'm just sending characters down the USB, and then it's coming back, and it's sending me back strings of data. So the point of that would be that it's a nice little toy, and, and I'm enjoying playing with it. 
But my, my friend who is good at maths, and I'm sorry you can't see that, but we've got a mismatch of... Uh, uh, my friend that is good at maths has, has written me some Kalman filter, uh, filters in Python. And uh, I'll, just, I'll just get on with it. If I run this... Um, so, the point that you might not have got from this, because I've, I've tried to go through it quite quickly, is that the, the data from that, that little sensor, that little 99p sensor, which is good enough to fly uh, a quadcopter, uh, is quite noisy. There's a bit of noise in that electrical. So, so here on this graph uh, that's been put together by, 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 by the Python code, the blue line is what we're trying to get at. So we're, in this case, we're in a static situation. The thing is, is still, it's not moving and the blue line is what we're trying to get to. Unfortunately, because of electrical noise, sensor noise, the red line is what we're getting. What the Kalman filter does is it makes a model of, of, of what it thinks the problem is, and then it tests the model against reality and then feeds that back into its model, so the model is always improving. The green line is the uh, output from the Kalman filter, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to get that green line to be as close to that blue line as possible. So it starts off with a model, and it checks the model, and it goes and it, and it checks the model, and, and obviously this noise, the more noise it gets, the, the better statistically it, it will get there. So it takes a while, and it gets there, and then it goes over a bit. And actually, Chris, this is a different graph from the last time, so the maths has worked slightly different. So this is a random, this is a random plot. The, the last time that we, we, we did this, there was, uh, in the random nature, there was a lot more up here at the beginning. So it actually overshot, it actually came above the blue line and thought, oh no, no, we've got it wrong. So you can see this idea that there's, there's uh, some maths that's self-correcting uh, and getting to what is hopefully uh, the correct answer. Now, when you're trying to do this very quickly and you're in a very dynamic situation, say a biped wo uh, robot walking, or, or, or worse still, more complex, still a drone, um, obviously the maths gets very hard very quickly. So it's all about making it simple so that I can, my 50 year old man can, can, can grasp it and, and, and go back. Um, and that's, that's it, that's all I wanted to show you.